The process of glycolysis allows cells to actually generate ATP molecules. In the process, it also generates NADH molecules. Now, for glycolysis to actually continue taking place, the NAD plus molecules that are used up in glycolysis must be regenerated, and that's because NAD plus concentration is limited inside our cells. And under aerobic conditions, when we have oxygen present inside our cells, these NAD plus molecules are regenerated on the electron transport chain. So the, NAD the NADH molecules that we form in glycolysis must somehow move onto the electron transport chain found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And there, the electrons are extracted from the NADH to form the NAD plus, and the electrons are also used to actually generate ATP molecules. So, the question that I'd like to focus on in this lecture is how exactly do the NADH molecules produced in the process of glycolysis actually get to the electron transport chain? So once again, under aerobic conditions, NADH molecules produced in glycolysis must be transported into the mitochondria. Why? Well, because the cell must use the NADH molecules to not only produce ATP molecules, but to also regenerate the NAD plus coenzyme that is needed for glycolysis to actually continue taking place. Now, there are actually different ways by which the NADH molecules can actually get into the mitochondria, and in this lecture, I'd like to focus on a specific type of membrane transport system known as the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle, and this is the shuttle that is used predominantly by skeletal muscle cells of our body. So, the inner mitochondrial membrane is actually impermeable to NAD plus or NADH molecules, and that means these NADH molecules, once formed in glycolysis, cannot simply move across the membranes of the mitochondria, and their movement basically depends on a specialized membrane transport system that we call glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. So let's begin in glycolysis. So in glycolysis, we oxidize glucose into pyruvate molecules. In the process, we also generate these NADH molecules. Now, once the NADH molecule is formed in the process of glycolysis, it remains in the cytoplasm. And what happens to it is a special enzyme known as cytoplasmic glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase actually oxidizes the NADH back into NAD+, that regenerates the NAD plus coenzyme needed for glycolysis. And what this process also does is, it passes those high energy electrons from the NADH onto a molecule known as DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And this is the same molecule that we find as an intermediate in the glycolytic pathway. So in process one, NADH plus a proton reacts with the DHAP, an intermediate of glycolysis. So we essentially reduce this molecule into G3P, where G3P stands for glycerol 3-phosphate. And that's why this is known as the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. Because once we form the G3P, the G3P can now move across the outer membrane of the mitochondria and enter the intermembrane space. So in step one, in the cytoplasm, NADH produced in glycolysis is oxidized back into NAD plus by reducing dihydroxyacetone phosphate DHAP into glycerol 3-phosphate G3P. And this reaction allows us to regenerate the NAD plus needed for the glycolytic pathway and also allows us to actually pass down the electrons onto a molecule that can now move into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. And this is catalyzed by the cytoplasmic glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, 
Once the G3P actually moves into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria, it is now oxidized back into DHAP by an enzyme that is found on the outer portion of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And this enzyme shown here in orange is actually an isozyme version of this cytoplasmic glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. And so we call this enzyme the mitochondria version uh, glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase or simply the mitochondrial glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Now what this enzyme actually does is it oxidizes the G3P into DHAP by taking off those two electrons and two protons and placing them onto an FAD molecule that is bound to that enzyme. So FAD is flavin adenine dinucleotide and it can accept two protons and two electrons. So in step number two, we see that the enzyme transfers the two electrons and two protons from the G3P onto FAD to form the FADH2. And in the final step of the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle, the FADH2 is actually oxidized back into FAD in the process, those two electrons and the two protons that ultimately came from these two reactants here are basically transferred onto a ubiquinone that is found within the hydrophobic core of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And we reduce that ubiquinone into ubiquinone. Now remember back in our discussion on electron transport chain, we said that ubiquinol basically carries the high energy electrons and the protons onto complex three of the electron transport chain. So if this is our electron transport chain, we have complex one, complex two, complex three, four, and complex five. This molecule here is this mitochondrial glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase that we discussed in this diagram. And so ultimately, the two electrons are passed onto this molecule, and then the ubiquinone takes those two electrons and becomes ubiquinol and passes those two electrons directly onto complex three. And what that means is we essentially bypass complex one. Because when the NADH molecules are produced in the citric acid cycle, because the citric acid cycle takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria, these NADH molecules actually pass down their electrons onto complex one of the electron transport chain. But the NADH molecules produced in the cytoplasm via glycolysis, they actually pass down their electrons onto complex three via this enzyme known as glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. So because of that, what actually happens is the net number of ATP molecules produced by the NADH, which is formed glycolysis, is only 1.5, compared to a value of 2.5 that is produced by NADH molecules formed in the citric acid cycle. And to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following calculation. So let's get a red marker and a black marker. Okay. So for those NADH molecules produced in the matrix of the mitochondria via the citric acid cycle, these NADH molecules are oxidized back into NAD plus along complex one of the electron transport chain. And when these two electrons travel through complex one and ultimately end up on ubiquinone, a net result of four protons are pumped into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So when these electrons travel through complex one, this pumps four protons. Now these two electrons are collected by ubiquinone. That becomes ubiquinol. Ubiquinol then travels through the core of the membrane and attaches onto complex three. And complex three then moves those electrons ultimately onto cytochrome C. In the process, a total of two, a net result of two protons are actually pumped across the membrane from the matrix and into the intermembrane space.
And finally, cytochrome C carries those electrons onto complex 4. And in complex 4, as those electrons are travel through the complex and ultimately are used to reduce oxygen into water, we pump a net result of 4 ATP molecules from the uh, matrix of the mitochondria into the intermembrane space. And so when a single NADH molecule produced in the citric acid cycle found in the matrix is oxidized into NAD plus by the electron transport chain, we transport a net result of four, two and two, so 10 protons into the intermembrane space. Now, these 10 protons then move via complex 5, also known as ATP synthase, to actually generate those ATP molecules. And recall from the previous discussion, four protons are needed to actually generate a single ATP molecule. And so we see that we have a total of 10 H plus ions pumped into the intermembrane space by this NADH produced in a citric acid cycle. We need four H plus ions to generate a single ATP molecule. And so we divide these numbers, we get a value of 2.5 of ATP molecules are generated when a single NADH produced by the citric acid cycle is oxidized into NAD plus by the electron transport chain. Now, let's carry out the same calculation, except now we do it for the NADH produced by glycolytic pathway, which takes place in a cytoplasm. Because NADH actually passes down the electrons to the DHAP to form the G3P, and then the G3P goes into the uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria binds up to this enzyme here and so ultimately those two electrons on the NADH produced in the glycolytic pathway actually end up on this protein and then they're picked up by ubiquinone to form ubiquinol and so NADH bypasses complex one and that means as the electrons pass down to ubiquinol, the ubiquinol travels and attaches onto complex three. And so now two protons are pumped here, four protons are pumped here. So we form a net result of six protons in this case, as compared to the 10 protons in the previous case. And so now six H plus ions divided by, we still need four H plus to generate a single ATP. We form 1.5 ATP per single NADH that is oxidized, that is produced in the glycolytic pathway. So from this, from this result, we can conclude the following. Since the mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to NADH, the solution to actually transporting the NADH is not actually moving the NADH, but rather transporting those electrons onto a different molecule, then moving that molecule across the outer membrane and using that molecule to move the electrons onto this enzyme, which then moves those electrons onto ubiquinone. So, since the mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to NADH molecules, the solution is to extract the electrons from NADH produced in the glycolytic pathway and ultimately pass them down to ubiquinone to form ubiquinone. And then ubiquinone, ubiquinol, essentially completely bypasses complex one because it gives the two electrons onto complex three. And since NADH from glycolysis bypasses complex one, it only produces a net result of 1.5 ATP molecules rather than the 2.5, which are produced from the NADH that is formed in the citric acid cycle that takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, this, this process called the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle is used predominantly by skeletal muscle cells. And this process allows the skeletal muscle cells not only to use the high energy electrons to generate the much needed ATP molecules, but it also allows the skeletal muscle cells to actually regenerate the NAD plus molecules needed to continue glycolysis. Now, this actually is not the only type of shuttle that our cells can use. And as we'll see in the next lecture, liver cells and cardiac muscle cells
actually use a slightly different shuttle system. 